When I was just 13 years old, I was in the seventh grade, and on January the 10th, 1956, when I got to school, or maybe it was the next day, but this happened on January the 10th, uh, there was a newspaper that had a headline that said, Five Missionaries Martyred in Ecuador. And uh, at that time, I had no idea what a lot of that meant, but I did see pictures in the magazine and the newspaper of five men floating face down in the water with spears or arrows in their backs. And it made a great impression on me, and I thought, wow, I'd like to know more about that. Well, over the years, I learned more about that, and I found out that these five missionaries uh, had gone to, they, they actually lived in Ecuador, but there was one tribe of people, the Aka Indian tribe, who had never, ever heard the story of Jesus. And so they said, well, we want to uh, make contact with these people and maybe go in and, and tell them about Jesus. So they would fly their airplane and they would lower uh, in a, a bucket, they would lower little gifts down and they uh, would put uh, uh, chocolate and they would put little trinkets of one kind or another in that bucket. And, and as it would hang down or they would drop it down on the ground, these Indians, these natives would run out and they would pick it up and look at it and then they would wave at the men in the plane. And one time they even put a parrot, the, the natives put a parrot in the bucket, and they pulled it back up, and they thought, well, they're giving us a gift. And so uh, everything looked like it was going great, and they would fly over, and the people would wave at them, and they finally said, well, we think maybe it's time for us to land and make contact. And they did. They landed, and their seaplane, they landed in the water, and and uh, and some of the natives came out, and they gave to them some gifts, and and some food and things like that. And they even took one or two of the natives up to fly in the airplane and they would let them look down and see their village and they thought that was amazing. So they thought things are going great. Everything is just happening just like it ought to. But uh, one particular day on January the 10th, 1956, the men landed and uh, what they didn't know was that the natives had been talking. They had been uh, saying, well, we don't trust these men. We think they're here for some bad reason. And so they decided that when they come back, we're going to kill them. And that's exactly what they did. And whenever they landed, and by the way, the... Uh, uh, um, the missionary men, the five men, they had guns, but they refused to use their guns because they said, you know, we uh, we haven't come to kill people. We've come to help give life to people. But they, all five of them were killed. And one of them's name was Nate Saint. And the, the other five or the other four are just as important, of course. But Nate Saint, when he was killed and the word got back to... Uh, to his family and to his uh, sister, Rachel Saint, that he had been killed. They Everybody was just shocked. Everybody was so sad. And Elizabeth Elliott, who was the wife of Jim Elliott, and, and, and the other men, their families, all of them had families, and they were all just brokenhearted and sad. And they thought, well, I guess that ends our ministry to uh, the Aka Indian tribe. But, as it turned out, there was a young Aka girl who had escaped from a family feud that uh, they were having, and she, her name was Dayuma, Dayuma, and uh, uh, to make a long story short, uh, 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 Rachel Saint, Nate Saint's sister, met Dayuma. And they began to talk, and she began to help understand the language and translate the language. And after a while, Dayuma said, uh, said uh, why, are, why are you being kind to me? He said, because my people killed your brother. He said, you should be trying to kill me. And she said, oh, no, no, we love you. And, and she told her the story of Jesus, and Dayuma 
prayed to receive Jesus as her Savior. She was the first Aka to ever hear the story of Jesus and the first Aka to uh, become a Christian. And then after a while, she said uh, to Rachel Saints, she said, I need to go back to my people and I need to tell them the story of Jesus. And so she did. She went back. And she was gone for over a year, and nobody knew what had happened to her. And they thought, well, I suppose maybe they killed her, too. But after about a year, Dayuma showed up again. And she said to Rachel Saint, the people are ready to hear the story of Jesus, and they want you to come. And so Rachel Saint and, uh, and also Elizabeth Elliot, these two widows, went to the people who had killed their brother and their husband, and, uh, and they began to tell them about Jesus. And as they shared the gospel, one of the men came forward and, she, and said, I am the one who threw the spear into your brother, and I, I killed your brother. And Rachel Saint, of course, was sad, but she embraced the man and she said, well, she said, do you know that I was the one who nailed the nails into the hands of Jesus? And he looked shocked. And then she said, well, not literally. I'm not the one who actually did it, but my sins actually put him on the cross and he died because he loved me. And she said, my brother died because he loved you. And that man became a Christian. As a matter of fact, many, many of the Aukas became Christians. In fact, if you were to go to that place today, there is a large church, and you would find many people there who are worshiping Jesus. And uh, and uh, Nate Saint, I mean, uh, Rachel Saint and Elizabeth Elliot and others brought some of the Aka Indians to, the, to America and let them share their testimony. And a movie was made called The End of the Spear. And if you ever have a chance to watch it, you might want to watch that. And uh, uh, Elizabeth Elliot wrote a book called... Um, uh, I can't remember the name of it right now. But uh, uh, you could find that book... And uh, uh, there's so many stories about Nate Saint, Rachel Saint, and uh, uh, it's a wonderful story of how a bad story can have a good ending. And that story uh, certainly had a great ending with even though those five men were killed and there were left women as widows and, and uh, children without fathers, they ended up uh, leading uh, almost a whole village to uh, faith in Christ. And uh, uh, by the way, the name of that book was Through Gates of Splendor. So you might want to get the book Through Gates of Splendor and, and see the movie, uh, The End of the Spear, and you'll see the story of uh, Nate Saint, Jim Elliott, Roger Udarian, and other the other missionaries who were killed that day. So it's a sad story with a glorious ending.